Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Waves. This is Ben, our Gene Vest loving, fearless captain. One day he convinced me to go along with him on the adventure of buying and moving on to a sailboat, Kiana. <laughs> and since then, we've had no regrets. <laughs> I'm Allie, by the way, first mate and fishing enthusiast. And together, we've been exploring the Pacific Northwest, and one day we hope to take her home and our surfboards even further. <laughs> oh, this is Bruce, our sandy boat dog. Thanks for coming along with us, and special thanks to our patrons for keeping us going. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Oh my god. Oh, I can't believe this is a thing right now. Alright, so we're down here in the southern, southern tip of Vancouver Island, down this way. And we're heading at least as far as Port Renfrew today. That's 40 miles. The Strait of Juan de Fuca is a notorious stretch of water where heavy current and a pulling wind can create a really nasty sea state. The wisdom is to hug the shore and try to keep the current following you for as long as possible. It's a cloudy, rainy day today, which is expected because we have an easterly wind, which usually brings cloud and rain. So this is what we wanted. We got the weather window we needed to hopefully sail up the strait. We got the tide with us most of the day. We're up pretty early, it's about 7 a.m. Took Bruce ashore, getting dinner or breakfast going, getting the boat all secured, and we're off. Hi. Here I go, we are entering the Juan de Fuca. As Ben said this morning, this is one of the most credible passages we will have made to date. Um, it looks really good though, the conditions are with us. So I'm excited, I'm proud. It's early, I know, but I'm just proud of us for being brave enough to do it. <laughs> and then we'll be on the other side. Oh, Brucey, are you pouting because you're wet? We haven't quite managed to figure out how to flake our very crispy, crunchy new mainsail very well. Although every time we've dropped it so far, it's been in like blistering headwinds. So we should just raise it today. There's no wind right now and reflake it. But anyway, yeah, we're just off heading up the Juan de Fuca. Hope you can hear me okay out here. The wind should fill in from behind in about an hour from now, I think. So we'll probably get like 10 miles motoring in and then hopefully a nice tailwind up. Haven't decided if we'll go to Port Renfrew or Banfield. Banfield's like another 40 miles, I think. Uh, there's some surf breaks on the way that I'm, I want to check out. Uh, there's a headwind coming later today and tomorrow. So I don't know, we got a lot of variables, but for now we're just excited to be off. Heading up the coast and waiting for some easterly wind to blow us further. It got kind of damp, so we got inside. We came inside. One of the best things about Kiana is this inside. Um, I don't know what you call it. Pilot station. Inside pilot station, because on days like this, you can sit here. Ooh. Yeah, it's nice. There still isn't a whole lot of wind. It's actually just starting to pick up. Headwind again. But I do think an easterly is coming soon. But, so we're coming, we're probably halfway up the strait now. We've just gone past Jordan River. Uh, Sombrio is sort of a few miles up this way. And I've noticed that it looks like we're getting some westerly swell coming in because the American side of the strait ends 
you know, a few miles up that way. So the south swells can't get in here, but the westerly swells can. So now that I'm seeing a little bit of swell come in, I'm thinking we'll, we'll head in closer to land and we'll have a look at the beaches on the way to Sombrio and see if we can find a little surf wave. And if not, then maybe the wind will fill in and we can just start sailing. First possible little knee-high wave. Doesn't look like it's gonna be worth getting in the water for, but we'll see, maybe a set will come. Not quite. We're coming around the point here to a well-known spot I've served a bunch of times. Uh, this time of year you wouldn't really expect it to be waves, but we're going to check it anyway. There's definitely some swell coming in, just if there's anywhere that there's waves it's going to be this spot, so we'll go have a look. I'm so happy right now. This is so cool. We're like, like look at this, this beautiful fog that's in these trees and we're checking out waves and they are too small now and we're on too small of a scale right now but just imagine like if this was bigger like we're we're doing it i got a hot chocolate in my hands and i'm like cozy and warm as i check out the wave and waves that like nobody can really get to this is cool we're doing it i'm proud of us here at the spot that I've been to a bunch of times and there is some swell breaking but it's not looking like it's worth getting in the water uh, and the wind is finally picking up this is what was supposed to happen like two or three hours ago so I think we're gonna pass on the surf and get our sails out and engine off and, and full. keep on adding up I think we're probably gonna go to Port Renfrew but at this point it's not even noon uh, Port Renfrew is 10 miles away and Banfield is like 50, so oh God. we'll have to make a call. We could just we could just blow all the way up to Banfield, but I think we're leaning towards doing a day in Port Renfrew, enjoying some sunshine tomorrow, and then catching an easterly on Wednesday up to up to Banfield. So. The wind calls and we must go. Yeah, it's a pretty cool day. I don't even really care that we didn't score waves. Wouldn't really expect to this time of year on in the Juan de Fuca. But it was just fun looking, fun the potential to score some waves. Yeah. And we got we know that once we get out just a little bit further, like past Port Renfrew, we're now on the exposed open ocean and we'll get the south swells. And there's a good chance I'd say we'll get waves along the way to Banfield after that, so Well, we didn't get our surf waves, but we are currently going six knots on a broad reach. So at least we got that. We're getting something today. It's pretty sweet, pretty cruisy. I feel like we're not working that hard. Proud of us. First downwind sail. I don't remember the last time we did downwind sail. We are finishing off the day with a solid beam reach. Beam reach into Port Renfrew. We're doing about seven knots. <laughs> it's fun. Also too, I was just sitting here in the captain's, in the pot inside with the little fire on, getting cozy. Um, and I'm looking out the window and I see this like ocean swell, like the big rollers coming. And I feel the boat lift and then I feel her like go down. And then I'm, when I'm down, I'm looking at waves that are like big walls. It's crazy. Um, I've only ever stayed like in the strait uh, or or like in inlets and stuff. So this is my first time on like open ocean swell, I guess. 
Um, it's cool to see. It's cool to feel. It's weird. It makes you feel like you're a little like you're just bobbing along. <laughs> you feel very small. <laughs> We are here. We are going to drop the hook in Snuggery Cove, which is just behind this break wall. Chris, do you have anything to say to the camera about our journey so far? I'm sorry, what would you like to say? You're having fun then, eh? I'm so glad you're enjoying yourself. Are you just here for the snoozing? <coughs> Tell me about it. What's your favorite part of this? Chasing otters or chasing seals? <laughs> <coughs> oh, a seal. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> just based on the weather alone. Nothing else, we don't have to be anywhere. We, all we have to do is decide if we want to surf or fish, and is it a tailwind or a headwind? Looks like we've lined up a perfect swell opportunity for a wave in the area. For a nearby <laughs> wave. Um, yeah, we, we lucked out. And the thing is, is that it's ready in two days. So tomorrow is gonna be really sunny. And so we're gonna hang out around here and just like, um, fish and maybe have a fire and just bask in the sun and warm up and then the day afterwards um, we're gonna have a headwind on the way north of the coast so we'll just light though so we'll just like doo -doo 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 -doo. we'll <laughs> take the boat put her up to the wave we'll surf and it's supposed to be beautiful four to six feet offshore winds um, and then after that the tail, the wind is going to switch around. We're going to have a tailwind, and then we can catch it up the rest of the way to Banfield, um, where we're meeting our friends. And could not, could not have read it, but like could not have imagined a better scenario than that. Yeah, it's like, perfect. this is exactly what we're hoping for, and wasn't expecting it, but we're just going yeah. by what we want to do and by what the conditions are. So we are doing it right. And you know how we're doing it right is because we went two, spent two years doing it wrong and we <laughs> learned what not to do so that we can know <laughs> how to do it right. I think we got a lot more of learning what not to do ahead of us, but. For sure. Right Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Waves. <clears throat> Just wrapping up a couple items that need to knock off before I can fully, fully go off grid for a few days. So I left Ben to do some of his work. So I was getting bored and starting to distract him. So yeah, off to kind of do some exploring by myself. See Renfrew a bit. We're just gonna go on a little river float. This is your jam. <laughs>
friend says, let's go on a little pet. When Ben and I were growing up, we were, our parents would be like, go play in the woods, go, go away, go outside. And we would like find salamanders and worms and like, I remember climbing trees that would go over rivers and break and I'd fall in the river and I, it's kind of weird because I feel like times are different now. And Ben and I are doing our best to create our adult lives to reflect the things that we loved doing the most as kids. So we made a friend. We have a friend who has a depth finder and we're going up the river together. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers! <laughs> the channel is called Fucking Around and Filming. We gotta go have a beer with this guy. He's cool. I want to be his friend. Oh yeah, did you, did you guys catch his boat? He thought he'd just stay there. It was just a sentimental moment with like an old guy who's looking back on his life being like, yeah, man, life was good to me. It was great. Update, there is a slight bit of chop out there. <laughs> we got a little bit wet on the dinghy ride home, but it was some heavy chop and this dinghy just pounded through it. So. I didn't feel unsafe at any point. I was actually having fun. We were talking about how sweet it would be if it was like a warm water tropical destination, but we still had a pretty good time. The so. sun's out, so I'm not mad, okay, but <laughs> literally we'd go up ramps. <laughs> That's but the dinghy, the dinghy handled it. Our last dinghy, that would have been terrifying. This I, thing yeah. is like a joyride. I used to call the last dinghy a death trap because I was so certain I would die. Thankfully, no humans died in the making of this episode. But we would like to shout out Jason Riddle for joining our Patreon team. If you haven't already, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on our future episodes. And don't forget to hit that bell.